When you take a look at all these people, you may quickly spot their similarities. They might share a common religion, food, and even daily realities. However, a closer look will reveal more differences than you could imagine. I grew up in a society where people identify themselves mostly based on ethnic and tribal lines. Coming to Germany, I became curious to find out if such patterns of identity exist here and if so, compare the extent to which daily lives are influenced by identity stereotypes in Cameroon, my home country, and Germany, my host country. Yeah, people are uh, identified uh, by their culture. Culture meaning their language, their religion, their food, their dress, the way they speak, what they do, and why they do, do the things they do. If you mean an identity uh, concerning people in a certain national surrounding, I think uh, uh, everybody has a different uh, idea about his own identity and the identity of others. The, the majority of the people in the north uh, are maybe a little bit more reserved, keeping to themselves. Um, they, um, whereas the southerners are a little bit more outgoing, then you have stereotypes among regions, for example, uh, people in the Rhineland are very outgoing and outspoken, uh, um, very tolerant uh, for uh, people that are of a, a different kind. Uh, you have people in, for example, uh, Swabia, which sort of tend more to themselves, uh, keep more to themselves, who are supposed to um, keep money much more to themselves, are very orderly in, in their uh, conduct. Um, then you have people in Berlin, for example, who are supposed to be more aggressive, more outspoken. It has to do, you know, in Cameroon we have what we call four cultural divides. You have the people from the Sawa, people who are around the water. And the stereotype is that because you're around the water, you know, you're lazy, it's the sea breeze, you know, you take things easy, you have your fish and whatever. And then those who are from the forest zones are more hardworking, they're feisty, they're fierce. Um, those who are from the sand, the sandy zones, like in the far north regions, they tend to be a little bit more closed in because uh, of the, the geographical features, you know, the hot sun and everything. So they, they tend to be in, in clusters, all right? And then those who are in the grass fields, the plains, we spread it wide. We have the territory, we have it all. So these are all stereotypes. You find out that the young people, they perceive themselves sometimes on the basis of being superior to other ethnic groups. Sometimes they discriminate even among themselves on the basis of which ethnic origin they uh, perform, uh, pertain to, it is difficult to get them uh, to arrive some consensus when it comes to accepting common uh, features, common values that apply to all of them as mere Cameroonians. Because it is highly challenging that most young people today in Cameroon still identify themselves more on those ethnic lines than on the uh, basis of the national uh, values or the republican values that ought maybe to be the case as we're talking about the state today. And um, sometimes you encounter situations that really uh, fit to the stereotype and I think then that's when you sort of, I think that it gets, might, might get blown out of proportion. I'm, I have a garden. I'm living in the eastern part of, of, of Berlin. That means in the former uh, 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 part of East uh, uh, Germany, you can say. And uh, I have a garden there. And uh, the president of the garden society is often coming to me, telling me what I have to do and what I don't have to do in that garden, because it's a garden which belongs to the Senate of Berlin. And I can smell his, uh, his uh, uh, his identity, you know, very, very quickly, because he's always coming with this. 
You have not done that and you have to do that and you have to cut this thing in exactly one week between the so and so. This is impossible for us. I mean, even if I want to cut, you know, my attitude would be to cut, I would not uh, uh, tell anybody else to do that in the same way like I'm doing it. Of course, the person is free to do whenever he wants to do. We need to engage, as well as the state, we need to embark on more uh, uh, campaigns, educational campaigns, which can permit the citizens to be more tolerant, which can permit the citizens themselves to understand other ethnic um, groupings in the country, because it's actually a matter of accepting the diversity and the richness of these diverse ethnic uh, groupings in the country. I think it's happening all the time. The more you, the more you uh, have intercultural dialogue or so, the less the stereotypes affect your, um, affect your um, behavior or the way, you, yeah, the way you behave towards other people. Um, and I think that's when stereotypes become, like in Germany, more folkloristic and not uh, anything that is divisive among people. So in a way, I, I don't want a society completely without stereotypes. I just want a, would want a society that is able to overcome the stereotypes in dialogue with the people. The fundamental line is the basic core values that we hold as a people. The value of love never changes. The value of peace never changes. The value of unity never changes. The value of family never changes. So we need to all go back to those core value systems that hold us together.